Hi, welcome back to Electronic Structure and Bonding in Inorganic Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the last video, we did an introduction to molar susceptibility, and we talked about different kinds of compounds. Some are paramagnetic and some are diamagnetic. And in this, we're not really concerned about diamagnetic. We're concerned about paramagnetic metals. And when we say paramagnetic, what we mean is that they have unpaired electrons. And it turns out that unpaired electrons, when a molecule has them, that molecule or ion tends to weigh more in a magnetic field. Okay, And we can actually determine the number of unpaired electrons if we can calculate either one of these two things, either the molar magnetic susceptibility or the spin-only magnetic moment. So what we're going to do in the next few videos is we're going to do some practice problems with using uh, these, well, these sort of conjoined equations up here. All right? And I think what you'll find is that for the most part, it's really just rearranging the equation to solve for what you need. But the other important thing you really need to remember is just you need to know what the questions, what it gives you. Um, it's really easy to confuse this X sub M, the molar magnetic susceptibility, and then mu sub S, the spin-only magnetic moment. So you have to pay really close attention to what the problem gives you and what it's asking you to solve for. So the way we're going to do it in this problem is I'm going to give you N equals 3. So what was N? Remember, N was the number of unpaired electrons. All right, and I'm going to ask you to calculate the molar magnetic susceptibility. And we'll also go ahead and calculate mu sub s, the spin-only magnetic moment. So let's do both of those. Let's calculate both the ma molar magnetic susceptibility and the spin-only magnetic moment. Let's do both of those. All right, so the first thing we need to do is recognize in this, whatever compound this is, there are three unpaired electrons. And since there's unpaired electrons, that gives us paramagnetism. So mu sub s is equal to the square root of 3, plugging in 3 for n, times the quantity 3 plus 2. All right. So if I simplify this a little bit more, this becomes 3 times, well, 3 plus 2 is 5. So this becomes the square root of 15. All right. Now I'm going to run that into the calculator. So the square root of 15 is approximately 3.87. All right, so that means my spin only magnetic moment is approximately 3.87. And the units of this, notice, for spin only magnetic moment are going to be BM, which is going to be Bohr magnetons. Those are the units for the spin only magnetic moment, Bohr magnetons. Okay? Um, one thing that's really important is, again, to pay attention to exactly what they're asking you to solve for. In this case, I just went ahead and solved for the spin-only magnetic moment, but you do have to pay attention because both the molar magnetic susceptibility and this magnetic moment are going to be different numbers, and they have different units. Mu sub s has units of Bm, Bohr magnetons, whereas molar magnetic susceptibility does not. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for x sub m. So how do I do that? Well, I just saw that the spin-only magnetic moment is this number. So I'm going to set this number, 3.87 Bohr magnetons, is equal to the square root of 8 times x sub m times temperature. And that temperature does have to be in Kelvin. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make this room temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's suppose in this problem our temperature is about 298 Kelvin. Let's just suppose that. So that way we have some numbers to plug in. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm solving for x sub m, so I have to isolate it. So I'm going to have to square both sides to rid myself of this square root. 